Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Mishar Mukdu. Um, I am the CEO of a company called Simple, and we are an inner source coaching company. Um, my main thesis is that working with computers um, is, can be much more easier if we basically just uh, came at it with the right approach. And which is one reason why I have, I, I've really started to love open source. So let me tell you a bit about myself. I have been in the, uh, in the industry for over 20 years now. Um, over the years, I have worked on various open source projects and along with various open source organizations. Um, and I have worked with, uh, with corporations uh, um, as well. I also organized Open Tech Summit Thailand, Thailand's first international open source conference. And lately, I have been participating in uh, inner source comments. So content warning. Um, what, uh, what I'm saying, I suppose, uh, can be a, 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 a little controversial and, and, and tongue in cheek. Um, but um, basically, um, <laughs> Ad, um, Agile has has taken a, uh, taken on a, a life of its own, right? I mean, the initial reaction when people think uh, about Agile has uh, has been this uh, this panacea being sold to uh, to suit uh, to uh, to attempt to gloss over structural problems in organizations and dysfunctional teams, uh, but being unable to actually uh, help. And there's been so many flavors of agile being 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 thrown around that it's really difficult to uh, to, uh, to figure out uh, uh, exactly what it is anymore. Um, but I like to focus on the uh, the, the more traditional, um, shall I say, uh, definition um, as. Uh, said about by Robert Martin, and he says agile is a set of principles, practices, and disciplines that help small teams build small software projects. Now, Bob Martin, um, he, uh, his career uh, and his thinking right, was developed in traditional organizations. This, uh, these are organizations that, ex uh, that existed and his teams existed on the days before the internet. In fact, when the Agile Manifesto was, uh, was signed, his, um, the, the internet was just starting to, 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 uh, to become popular. And I think that the signatories of the Agile Manifesto haven't exactly been able to see the full potential um, of the internet and what it can do to programming teams. So to illustrate uh, the, the point, right, um, how, uh, how, how else are our software projects run? Okay. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's step back a minute and see um, how do you build cars. When the, the motor car was, was first invented, you can see that they very much resembled uh, the horse-drawn uh, carriages of, the, of, the, of, its, of its day. Everything from, uh, from the wheels to the seating, uh, seating position um, uh, resembled that. Partially it's because of a lack of imagination, uh, perhaps, and partially it's possibly due, due to the logistics and supply chain um, of that era and what materials were available in order to build the first motor cars. And even today, you can see with the Tesla mo um, Model 3 um, that it very much resembles a traditional uh, gas-powered automobile, even though there is no longer an engine under the hood. And there are other there have been attempts to build other forms of cars, but we're still at the very, very early stages um, of the electric car. So we cannot fathom what five, 10, or even 20, 30 years from now, what the electric drivetrain will, will enable. So I think that similarly um, with 
open source, I, I see that open source has evolved on the internet, right? Uh, well, well, Bob Martin and the agile uh, uh, signatures were uh, were working in traditional uh, uh, offline, so to speak, corporations. We have another group of uh, of, of developers writing great software uh, on online uh, in the in the open source world. And this group of software developers utilize the internet to its maximum potential in order to create software. So, which is why I'm very excited about about open source and and and, and inner source because inner source is taking the lessons learned from the successful free and open source software projects and using them internally um, in enterprise IT. And I feel that this is successful basically because when when you leave uh, programmers to their own devices with the internet and let them collaborate together, the, the methodologies uh, that were invented in the open source world is, uh, comes naturally. So I think that these tools, these processes are very much befitting to the task of actually writing programs. And since it has uh, evolved somewhat naturally and, organi and organically and has survived, um, not only just survived, but thrived, makes it a very powerful um, movement set of methodology and it should be taken very, very seriously. So a bit about inner source itself, right? Uh, let's say you, ha you have a, a scenario that we see pretty often in, in traditional corporate teams. You have a team A designing a front end, coding front end, and you have team B working on, uh, on, on the back end, right? Um, and you have this in the context of a mega corporation where you may have a team A um, under working under a consumer department and you have team B working under the, the infrastructure under the infrastructure department, right? And you can consider Megacorp to be sort of a cloud, uh, um, you know, because you have the, the team, a team A and team B are, um, are, are not directly connected, but they have to co collaborate with, uh, with, with, with one, one another. Um, we also have smaller teams, right? Um, where team A and, and team B are, are small teams and they're working together, um, not no Megacorp, but then there are still challenges. There are uh, silos, there are incompatible cultures between the two teams. Um, there might be change uh, uh, resistance. Um, and, there, there, and there's the problem of low code quality in both teams. So team A needs a critical blocking feature from team B's module. Um, from team B's perspective, team A is just another customer. Um, they are, um, uh, well, they may be within the same organization, but then Team, team B has um, other things to do. They have their own KPIs, part of which Team A doesn't really factor in. So Team A can either wait, um, they pray that Team B delivers, they can work around, right? They can try to hack their way around, uh, around the features, or they can escalate. They can appeal to higher authorities, the CTO, the CEO, perhaps and have them to prioritize the features that Team A, uh, team a requires. And usually what happens in the meantime is that um, the customer suffers because team A is, um, is working on the customer facing features that they can't deliver that, the customer uh, is suffering and the competition in the meantime is winning. So inner source um, solves uh, this problem to a, a certain degree right? you, uh, where you create a problem communities and uh, team A working on the front end and team B on the back end are working together in the same uh, problem, uh, problem community. And what can happen in such a case is that like an open source project for working on problems uh, together, team B has designed their, uh, their processes and, um, and, and infrastructure to accept contributions uh, from outside, uh, outside their team. So in this case, uh, team A will be able to push the required uh, code into team B's 
code base. And so why this is important? Well, first of all, it increases collaboration across the enterprises, but it also opens up the, the opportunity to collaborate outside the enterprise um, in, um, in, the, in an open source manner as well. Uh, reduce time to market because the teams are not block, uh, blocking each other. Um, increase creativity and happiness. And uh, why, uh, this is interesting because many open source developers um, work on open source projects without getting any remuneration. They are, they are self-motivated. And this can also be something that applies to your internal team as well. Um, it, 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 it's not a very well understood phenomenon, but uh, but one can safely say that creativity and happiness is increased amongst uh, uh, open source developers. Um, you get more secure and robust software, right? Because more eyes and shallow bugs, and also because you accept internal external contributors, you don't entirely trust them. So you create um, you create processes uh, processes in in order to vet their code. But this also means that the code quality of internal developers uh, increases as well. Feedback comes early and often. Um, this would be very much um, in line with, with agile uh, principles as well. But because the code ships faster, um, um, the, the code is tested faster, um, and, feed, and feedback is gained faster. And this ultimately leads to a better product because then you can change it early because, before too much investment has been made. And then you also have a greater skin of the game across the, uh, the, the value chain uh, because, uh, because of, the, of the joint ownership over, um, over the code base and, and over the project. So, um, just as, as cars um, have several components um, in, in, in common, uh, we can see that agile uh, and, um, and open source and by extension, inner source also have many components in common um, as well. And so in this study is open source software development, essentially an agile method. Uh, we can see within the two columns, uh, they are mostly the same. Now, the reason why I think that inner source is going to start eating up the agile space is because of the, of the first highlighted item there. Um, agile, uh, basically requires a, a co-location uh, for, for it to be effective. While open source software basically um, evolved in a geographically distributed manner. The, and at the bottom, uh, you can see that, um, that Agile is worked um, with smaller teams while, uh, while open source methods fit naturally um, in the context of working with larger teams. And in, a, in an increasingly interconnected uh, world, I think that naturally we will have the tendency to prefer uh, methodologies that favor geographically distributed teams. And also with the size of software and uh, that is getting larger and increasingly, uh, increasingly complex and requires more collaboration, I think that larger dispersed teams um, would be uh, would be beneficial um, as well. Um, the other trend uh, that that we're seeing is the in the is the increasing amount of remote work. Again, um, inner source basically fits in um, here very very well, and we can also see that there is. Um, um, a lot of adopters in, in, in inner source. So between the fact that inner source has many similarities uh, with agile principles and methodologies, the fact that there's uh, uh, already starting to be a lot of prominent adopters, uh, the fact that open source, inner source's predecessor, was invented basically by programmers, or programmers, combined together this is the reason why uh, soon we are going to see inner source adoption all over the place, and which is why I think that 
inner source is going to be the new agile. So that's it from my presentation. Thank you very much.